Hey, welcome to another episode of Camp and Camera. Joanne's back there on a rock. We got a 12 volt refrigerator on a picnic table. Let's go. For those of you who are building your camper, and I've been seeing a lot of you on Facebook and on the internet, if you're looking for a 12 volt refrigerator solution for your galley, we may have what you're looking for. This is the compact Bouge RV portable 12 volt refrigerator they sent over for testing. This is quite a bit smaller than the previous one we showed you before. And they sent over this lithium power pack. Now this power pack is nothing you'd wanna use for a long period of time. It is pretty small, um, but if you're gonna have this thing, you know, running, let's say when you're going and getting groceries or just having a picnic, this will be perfect to power it with. So we have come out to our local city park here. We want to grab some grub out of this Bouge RV cooler. Show us what we got, Joanne. We have Zacchaeus. Which is the newest member of our family. We got him when he was, what, seven weeks old? Seven weeks old, and He's yeah. probably ten weeks old now, I would imagine. Yeah. We named that. him Zacchaeus because he likes to climb. <laughs> we have chicken salad sandwiches we packed on two different kinds of bread. Joanne made some homemade pasta salad, which looks like money. And a couple drinks. Delicious chicken salad. Pasta salad's good too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a week old. It's still good. <laughs> So before we jump into the features of this for fridge, why in the world do we even have the thing? Well, if you remember, Bouge RV reached out to us some time ago and sent us a big cooler, which we've taken on some trips and we really like it. And they even donated one last year for our camping on the porch episode that we did down at the Edgar Evans State Park. Um, so afterward, they said, hey, would you be willing to try out this compact refrigerator? And the reason we said yes is that this is the size refrigerator that will be perfect for the galley of a teardrop. Now, to be honest with you, we're not gonna put it in the galley of ours because it's not green. I've got my beautiful green cooler in the back of our galley and I can't even begin to think about taking it out because it looks so good. I know that's not the right reason, but that's what I'm gonna do. But I do wanna <laughs> test this thing out just to see how it works in case you wanna put one in yours. All right, so what exactly do we have here? This is a pretty, standard Bouge RV refrigerator. And what I mean standard is that it's got the similar controls to the one I had before. Pretty simple, you got your on and off, you got your setup button, which basically will turn it from maximum cooling to economy mode. Maximum would be uh, when you first turn it on to get it going and then economy to keep it cold and temp up and temp down. This is a single compartment semi-dual zone refrigerator and what i mean is it's just one big space and if you want to use the the one big space you absolutely can but if you put this divider in there this side which is closer to the compressor will run a bit colder than this side over here if you turn it down low enough usually for those that's about 34 degrees you can make this side just barely start to freeze the food and this side over here just be really cold you turn it down colder it'll full-on freeze over here now that's not a perfect way to regulate a refrigerator but this is not a $900 refrigerator either this is way south of that so if you want to just keep all of your cold uh, your food cold just turn it down 34 35 degrees take the divider out and it's going to be pretty much consistent across the the one big space so one of the features that I really like about the refrigerator is that it has this LED light which, believe it or not, is super bright in the nighttime. It does do a really nice job. It has a very heavy, um, I don't know what you call this thing. I'm gonna call it a lanyard, but it's a, basically just a retaining strap. It works really well. The refrigerator is pretty quiet. You can hear it run because it is a compressor refrigerator, but it's pretty quiet. Here's some of the, uh, the specs you can see on the inside of the lid. And speaking of the lid, it is a gasketed lid and it's magnetic. So listen to the sound of this thing snap back in place. I'm trying to push it up with one thumb. I have to put some pretty good force on it. I really like that seal on this thing. 
That's way better. Yeah, it is than way some better. we've had before. Oh yeah, we've had them before where you would push them until they snapped. And even then it felt like it had a little play on it. It was a different brand. It was one of the first ones we got. I'll let you go back and watch the videos, try to figure out which one that one was. But this is a very nice seal. So it does come with a couple cords. Right now I have a very long 12 volt cigarette lighter style um, accessory plug plugged into this, uh, this little auxiliary power box. And it also has a regular um, house 110 or 115 volt adapter and plug that comes with it as well. If you look on either side of the refrigerator, you're gonna see this handle and it's nice that it's there. But to be honest with you, it's it's kind of shallow and it's not really a good handhold. This is not a carry around refrigerator whatsoever. But if you're gonna put it in your teardrop camper, you probably could put some straps through these two loops here and strap it down to keep it from bouncing around when you're going down the road. It's got a, a bottle opener. I haven't tried that. Um, I don't have high hopes for it though because everyone I've ever tried to use always just spills pop down the side of the cooler. So I assume it'll, it'll get the thing open, no problem, but I, I would imagine it would make a mess. That's why we should have brought that orange pop. Yeah, we should have brought the orange pop. Um, there's a little platform on here where you can set something. There's four spaces, two larger, two smaller. Uh, if you want to set a drink on there to keep it from moving around. So if you are going to use this outside your camper. So let's cover something that I kind of like, but also have some heartburn with. Again, I'm just going to be open and honest and review. I know they sent this thing over for us to test. And I appreciate that, but I am going to be honest. When they sent this thing over, there's this big space inside, this storage compartment. And if you can see, there's a foam insert on the inside of here. That foam insert was not in there when I got it. I'm going to try to pop it out. I can't hardly get a hold of it. But they said you could put your power supply down in there. And you could but it wouldn't sit in there flat because of this little lip. So they ended up sending me this foam insert. So I'm hoping that the new coolers have the foam insert with them already. All right, so if you look in the back of this thing, you're gonna see this little grommet, little rubber grommet. Basically, you plug your cable into this thing, drop it down in here. It will go out the hole and it will come out down here to the bottom. That works really well but it's sloppy to me i think that if you're going to put a battery inside of it it needs to be able to plug into the unit inside of it and not have cords hanging around technically yeah it does work but i think it's just a little sloppy for that so let's talk about the auxiliary power box itself this thing's pretty nice it's kind of heavy it's usually in electronics heavy means good um, it is a cigarette lighter style plug uh, you push the power button It'll turn it on and it will show you the percent battery remaining and it'll show you the power going into it if you're charging it and the power going out of it if you're using it. I think if you push and hold this, yeah, it'll turn the flashlight on, which is kind of nice at the campsite. Um, here's your input for your charger that does come with it. You have a USB-C uh, output and input and a usb a output so it is it is a pretty handy little thing as you can see i've got it on maximum mode right now i have 90 percent power remaining i don't know how good this will focus right now i'm pulling 48 there's 44 46 so somewhere between 45 and 50 watts of power going out of in maximum mode. Let's turn it down to economy and see what happens. Now this is one rub I have with it, is that there's a lot of good information on the screen, but it's not very bright. So I've got it in economy mode now, okay? And you can see the power has now dropped down to the high 30s. So not a whole lot of difference. Um, but it is using a little bit less power than what it was on, on max. 
Now, one feature that I haven't tried, but I'm absolutely sure that it works, is you can go into the menu on this cooler, this refrigerator. If you've, let's say, got it plugged into your car battery and you don't want to kill your battery, you can set it for a voltage level that it will turn off. So if it drains your battery down to that voltage, the fridge will cut off and it'll save your car battery. And I think there's three different levels from that. It, and you can see that in the manual and it does come with a manual. Um, there's like a low, medium, and a high. So if you don't want to kill your car battery, don't worry. Just turn that feature on and it'll, and it'll save you on that. I'll try to queue up some B-roll of some other times that we've used it. Um, we've, we've had a pretty good amount of food and drinks in this thing. We've never had a problem with it, not cooling our, our food and groceries and whatnot on a trip. Um, or whether we've been out grocery shopping, we've never had an issue with it. Like I say, you do have to kind of learn the nuances when you use the divider in the middle of, you know, how does it cool each individual side versus the whole space. It's not a true dual zone refrigerator freezer, but it's, it's a pseudo dual zone if you put the divider in there. And again, we usually like to set ours in 34 degrees. That'll keep either the whole thing really cold or it'll keep one side cold and the other side nearly frozen. And that seems to work out well for us. All right, so let's go nerd on it. I don't know if you can see the display, but it says it's 35 degrees inside. Let's just see what the temp gun says. Now we do have an empty at the moment. There's 30 on that wall. This should be where the compressor is. It's 30 there, 38 in the bottom, 30 there. So that actually is really consistent across the space. And you would expect that the walls will be a bit cooler than the air inside because they're trying to pull the air down to that. So here's a little known fact about me I never told you before. I'm a train graffiti freak. I actually will pull over and watch a train go by just so that I can see the graffiti on it. And I even started keeping a little catalog of pictures at one point for, I think these guys are artists. Now they, they probably shouldn't be painting on the side of a train, but these folks are artists. All right, now that was some pretty good graffiti, I'll have to say. And you see what I'm talking about, how, how good the colors were and how artistic it was? Man, these guys and gals, they really, they really put on a good show. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go nerd for a minute. I've got a decibel meter here, and I wanna see what the compressor sounds like. And it's on economy mode. Let me turn it back to maximum. Okay, so there's maximum. I'm at about 48, give or take decibels. You can see when I talk, I'm talking at around 62, so I'm actually talking louder than the compressor is. All right, so in closing, yeah, I think it's a pretty good refrigerator. And if I were looking to build another teardrop and put a portable refrigerator in the galley, I would actually consider this one, I really would. I would shop around just because it's me, I like to shop, but this would be one I would consider, absolutely. Um, do like the build quality, a lot of good features about it I do like. So um, yeah, hey, I hope, hope this helped you out in your own build. If you like today's episode, hit that like button. If you dislike it, hit a big old thumbs down, I don't care. And uh, I hope you liked it. And until next time, take care, we'll see you on the road.